and welcome back. Um, so I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to try to keep these videos five minutes every day. That way, well, we'll, we'll get through the stuff. So, so and now we're going to look in detail at this thin film. And I want to make a couple notes here. Um, this picture is a little misleading, but it's actually a good way of showing it. So, um, in reality, the light is going to be coming in straight in. So the light's going to be coming straight along the normal lines of this boundary. So again, we're going air to some thin film, so for something, and then back into air. And again, and again obviously, these could be any, any materials. I've shown the light ray coming in an angle, and most people do this, so you can actually see the light ray reflecting. We can talk about these two reflected light rays. The first light ray is reflected off the upper surface. The second light ray is reflected off the lower surface. And we want to see how these two interact. We're showing it an angle so we can see that. If we, if we shot the light ray in straight down, we'd have all the stuff coming straight back up, and that would be confusing. So light obviously does come in at an angle, but we're really concerned about things coming in vertically, and you'll see why it has to do with the distance the light's actually traveled if you look at the medium. So anyway, if we take a look at this boundary, we have light coming in, some color of light. It could be white light. It could be a particular wavelength of light, polychromatic or mon monochromatic. We'll worry about that later. So here comes light, comes in, hits the boundary. How it interacts with this boundary depends upon the indices of refraction. So we're going to go back to something we talked about in physics one about free end and fixed end termination. I'll do that in the next page. But we want to look at, hey, it's going from air into something. We have to compare the indices of refraction to see what's going to happen, to see if this, if this light coming out is going to be phase shifted or not phase shifted. We're going to have to do the exact same thing in the lower boundary. And say so the light's traveling through this material here. It's going to hit a boundary and reflect back because it's trying to pass into this other material. And we'll have to look at the nature of these two indices of refraction to see what happens with the phase shift. So to do that, to understand that, we're going to go back to something you studied in Physics 1. And that's uh, in, from the Slinky Lab. So you guys went down the hallway, down by the Ox Gym probably, and you played with Slinkies for an hour. And hopefully in the post lab you had a discussion about free end and fixed end termination. And I think this is a page that you probably want to stop the video and copy down the notes. So you need to understand, and you may remember this, but some of the kids don't. So I'm going to show you the, the light wave analogy and then the slinky wave analogy and talk about what happens. So here we have light coming in. Now light is going, in this case, from something like air into glass. And we're only really concerned about the reflection process. So we know it's going to refract also, but we don't care about that. We're looking at the reflection. What happens during this reflection? So because air has a lower index of refraction than glass, we are going from something that's easy to travel through into something that's hard to travel through. That's, and therefore the light reflects. But that's exactly what happens with a slinky when we have what we call a fixed end termination. So you may recall in the slinky lab, you send the pulse down the slinky or the rope and it came in, and because your partner was holding at the other end, it was fixed in position, the rigid support, the wave came back on the other side. And of course, in mathematics, we say that it had a phase shift 180 degrees. So you talk about sine and cosine, for example, being shifted 90 degrees. Well, this wave is on the other side. It's flipped halfway around, so it's got a phase shift 180 degrees. When you have fixed end termination, that happens optically when you go from something that's got a low density into a higher density. So the material was in first, N1 has a lower index of refraction, and to N2 is a higher index of refraction. So if you're trying to go from a less dense to a more dense, we get a wave, a reflected wave that shifted 180 degrees from the initial incoming wave. If that made sense, then the opposite's going to be super easy to follow. It's going to be the exact same thing, but in reverse, if we have the other situation. So here, the light ray is in the glass. It's got a high index of refraction. It's trying to go into something with lower index of refraction, air, and it will. But again, we're only concerned about the reflection process. So because we're going from something high density to low density, that's like doing the slinky lab where you sent the pulse down and it was free to move. And so the wave came back on the same side. So there was no phase shift. So the incident wave and the reflected wave are not phase shifted. And we call this free end termination. And again, that only happens when you go from something from a high density into a low density. And again, there's no phase shift. So that's super important for understanding what's going to happen when we do thin film interference. Now again, we're up to four and almost five minutes, so I'll stop the video here and you can digest that. That's our daily lesson.